I'm just doing a quick build log for the um, Pack 3536 from Tamiya, one of the older kits. And um, I'm going to do this in uh, Spanish Civil War colours. Uh, there was a few views there, but that's where it was tested in battle first. And um, it actually gets quite a nice camo scheme for that uh, area, a bit like this Panzer 1 I've got here. So it's a three tone camouflage. And unusually, it starts with the green uh, for the early period. So um, that's the sort of colours we're going to be looking at. So I hope you enjoy. I'll let you know if I run into any problems as we progress with the build.
So since the last bit, um, the three portions of this that I had set aside have dried, so I've just lined it all up and um, brought it together. Uh, it is all left to be movable. I've left the arms here movable, uh, pinned it a bit tighter so that they're a bit stiffer. Uh, but I'm probably going to leave it open and then um, have a sort of little um, diorama for it at a later date. But uh, I've glued this down. There is um, elevation there as well, so you can sort of pose it. You don't have to decide straight away. And um, this has taken, I suppose, about um, two hours to get to this point. So um, not bad for a little sort of weekend build. Um, and this is primed now in Mr. Surfacer 1200. So I've thinned it with um, a self leveling thinners, and that gives a very nice surface where you can see if there's any imperfections. So I've just um, sanded a few bits here back where there's a few marks on the gun shield. So um, now it's ready to spray. I've got a custom mix I can show at the start. So I'm going to do the um, early uh, German. Um, uh, camouflage, which is free tone, so um, a bit like the very late war. So it's the same colours, more or less. It's different shades. So you've got the sort of sand yellow, uh, dark green. Was well, actually a, a medium green, I suppose, and um, a f slightly different brown. It's not a ready brown. It's more of a kind of leather brown. Um, so I've mixed these up. So um, you base it with green, and then the camouflage patterns are done with these two. So. Uh, it does make it look a bit different. So uh, start spraying and um, we'll take it from there. Right, so this is uh, coming together quite nicely, and um, I've got it together now, and uh, you've just seen the um, camouflage going down, so you've got the three point camouflage there. Now the wheels uh, still come off, and I've just painted the uh, rubber rims with uh, Tamiya XF85, which is a really good colour. <coughs> it's much better than black, it's rubber black, and it's just a sort of off, off black colour, it's got a touch of grey in it and it just um, gives you a realistic sort of t uh, rubber colour so it's very good for that and um, this has now had a gloss coat. I did do a bit of uh, paint chipping just with the old technique of um, stippling with a piece of foam uh, with, oh, you, again I used uh, rubber black uh, but also a very good one in the Tamiya Ranges um, XF69 NATO Black, so that's very good for chipping as well, just gives you a very natural colour. And I've just applied the chipping around the top here and around some of the movable parts, as well as under here, just subtly, and um, on the rear parts here of the legs, which would obviously get a lot of wear, and also <coughs> on the outside of the wheels. So it's all coming together quite nicely. That's now had a gloss coat and um, I'm going to apply one oil wash of um, raw amber which I'll make up myself, it's pretty simple, I just mix it um, 
to eye, so it's uh, quite uh, watery, as it were, uh, with uh, odourless thinners for oil paints. I'll give it a whole wash all over just to tone the colours down and um, run into the panel lines and make the rivets pop. Um, give a bit of depth in the uh, in, on the inside as well. And I think I'll call it there. I will do a bit of um, uh, staining there on the wood, on the wooden handle for the shovel, and um, give it a matte coat. And I think I'll call it there and um, add a bit of uh, just finish off with some pigments, like we've been doing on some of the other builds. So uh, very enjoyable kit. It's all coming together very nicely. So um, nice quick build, and I uh, hope you're enjoying. So we're in the final stage of this one now. Um, it's had uh, some weathering done, just basic stuff like I mentioned earlier. Um, and it's been matted down now, so it's had a matte coat. Uh, the wheels are still able to come off just for ease. I'll probably leave them with that um, because I've got a show coming up that I want to use this for, but after that I think I might um, put this on a diorama. So um, it's quite useful to have the wheels to come off so I can do some sort of wheel tracks and all the rest of it. Um, same with these being posable. So the camera's gone down as you can see. So most of you probably know what a filter is but um, for those of you who don't, I didn't film it because there's um, there's hundreds of videos on YouTube showing you what that is. But what I've used here, because this is basically, if you think of this as uh, late war German free tone camouflage, although this is obviously pre-war, and the colours are a little bit different to what you'd get uh, in sort of later war German tanks and, and um, armoured fighting vehicles and stuff. Uh, this is essentially the same thing. You've got a brown, a green and a, and a sand yellow. And uh, they work very well under what's called a filter. And the best filter for that is uh, raw umber. And the term filter generally means you're basically looking through that colour of this very thinly and it just blends all the colours together and um, dulls it a little bit and makes it look, look more realistic. Now on the back here where it's just green there's uh, natural streaking comes about from it and um, it just gives a bit of depth to the gun shield there so um, I'll take some detailed pictures uh, at the end of this build so you can see up close what I'm talking about um, and all I do, you can buy filters, uh, all sorts of people do them. Um, here's one, for instance, this is an AK-1 uh, for the Africa Corps. So this is an enamel um, wash, basically. Uh, a very, it's a very thin wash is what a filter is because you're meant to be able to look through it. It just leaves a sort of film of colour. And um, this one's for the Africa Corps, so it's a sandy colour and it's um, enamel based. Uh, very, very thin. Uh, you know, basically water sort of... I um, don't know if you can see that, but it, it's it's same viscosity as water um, and you treat it in the same way but you probably need different thinners um, so the oil thinners wouldn't work for it so you'd, you'd need something for it and it, you just go spread that on usually I use a large brush so you get yourself a decent brush an artist brush uh, something wide and a little bit soft and then um, I mix this very thinly with odorless thinners uh, that you can get from the artist shop you know here is Hobbycraft in, in the UK um, and mix it in a I use a clear plastic dish and you know bits of stuff that you get from food packaging and stuff and put a dollop of uh, the oil in and plenty of this mix it up and thin it down to the sort of consistency of again like water it needs to be very thin and then you just brush it on quite heavily all over the uh, model and it will naturally run into the recesses and this isn't so much a pin wash, for instance, so like with the flooring models wash that I've used in the past, like this, a clay based wash, this would be like a panel line wash and it's trying to get into the details and it's giving you depth um, into the panel lines and all the recesses. Now I haven't used that on this because it, it can be a little bit difficult to get off um, where there's a lot of surface texture, as with most uh, clay based and um, other types of washes, whereas the oil wash when you're using the artist's oils, uh, this runs very well and it, it does pull it out of um, areas and then I use uh, if, if you've got too much on. And then when it starts to pull, if you've got too much on, you're not meant to obviously but it, inevitably it happens, I just dab with a cotton bud on the edges and that soaks it off through capillary action and then you're left with um, a very nice effect and then you need to leave that to dry for quite a while, you know, overnight or maybe a full day um, and then 
and that down on top of that and that gets us to the stage where we are. So that's that's what I've used there. So hopefully that's uh, not too confusing. Like I said, there's plenty of videos on um, YouTube and on lots of modeling sites regarding filters and pin washes and all the rest of it. So um, it's worth having a look if you don't know much about it and trying to understand the principles of it. And that's what I've done here and that's where we are now. So since the painting, all that this has had is a slight bit of chipping, which I mentioned with the sponge effect. And then um, I've glossed it with a, a clear coat and then use the oil filter just to give it minimal weathering I'm not going to worry too much and now we've matted it down so that's the um, parts that uh, I haven't filmed and then the pigments I'm going to use is um, the old favorite which is MIGS European Dust which uh, I find is pretty good for a generic um, dusty kind of look but um, you've got to be a bit careful because we're on the matte coat now and um, we're using pigments which are obviously very fine pigments um, they can bite in so sometimes it can take a while to get it out so you know less is more don't put too much on all in one go um, it's best to put a little bit work it around see if it's too much and then you can always take it off a lot easier there are such things as pigment fixers which is like a sort of enamel, an enamel um, a clear enamel wash which will uh, dry and stick the pigment on. I don't use that, I just like to leave it um, dusty as is but you can obviously use that if you want to fix the pigments in place. So um, that's the next part and then um, we'll get some pictures done and that will be this build all wrapped up. So when using pigments it's best to use um, one an old brush uh, that you don't want to use for anything else and also um, it's best to protect the work surface with something you can chuck away like a piece of paper uh, because it does sort of stick to everything it touches, especially if it's a rough texture. So with these pigments, um, again, bearing in mind what I just said about it sticking to everything, I tend to just work a, a little bit into the lid there. Um, now you start with the brush, but sometimes I find that's not enough, so it might be worth... Um, can end up using a few cotton buds as well. And um, we just work along the bottom there. Watch out for the dust as well, it can be a bit of an issue. And get it all around the bits, this is just areas that are obviously going to be in contact with a sort of dusty ground. So you make them heavy uh, in and around the running gear, obviously in there. Um, is a fair amount, obviously I'm not going to see underneath there but um, I had a bit there nonetheless. And then this is where it gets a little bit, um, you've got to be a little bit careful, so I'm going to start working in what we've just done there. And this is basically now, everything we've just put on, we're going to be trying to take off. So, um, if all fails, use your finger, because that usually picks up quite a bit. Um, and obviously the flat areas, you can hear there how rough it is. And if we've got a bit of excess, I always like to have the airbrush around with a bit of air and then you can just go in and that will take off some extra as well. And then the compressor kicks in. And then generally work it into um, areas that are going to be in contact, like I said. So obviously now what we've done there, that also means that we want it all around the inside of the tyre. It is funny stuff. It can look like it's more hassle than it's worth, but the, um, the final outcome is, is usually really good. So it's worth the effort. Again, there's a bit of extra in the corners there, so just pop that out. The airbrush, that's the inside of one wheel. Try something a bit different here, actually apply it with the uh, cotton bud, which is falling apart. So we'll get a new one. Just work that around in there. And then we're going on to the side of the tyre, but this is where you get, um, you can 
using your finger it's it's quite quite good especially when you're on the mat as well some of your oils come out of your fingers so that's not actually a bad thing when it comes to tires so if i do this for instance you can actually rub around on the tires with your thumb i'm not sure if you can see that but it gives a bit of a highlight uh to the raised areas it gives it a bit of a sheen which um if you ever look at tires they do tend to have sort of um high points as it were so it's not Nothing's ever really dead flat is what I'm trying to get at, so you know, don't worry if uh, you've got a bit of shine here or there, as long as you blend it in and make it look natural, it all adds to the uh, final effect. So, now we'll try and work some here into the tyre tread. And the important bit to remember here with pigments on tyre treads is if you ever look at tyres again, the mud, or whatever we're trying to replicate here, is always on the inside it's not on the outside so for instance here you know that's absolutely covered now obviously if it's just gone through a dusty uh, dusty track it would look something like that but um, if it's gone onto a bit of uh, tarmac or road or something you'd get this sort of uh, effort you see and that's the sort of effect we're going for now I'm taking a bit out of the sides there where I'm grabbing hold of it um, but again, that's no bad thing because we're, we're trying to look natural and uh, nature isn't generally, there's not much symmetry in nature so it's good to be a bit um, uneven in places. So that gives you the sort of idea there, there's a bit of um, mud stuck in the tyre tread there, so that's the effect we're going for. Now I'll just clean up the rest of the tyre, so on the outside I don't want it too dusty, not like the inside, and then the old friend, the uh, uh, brush and that's the effect we're looking for quite clear on the outside some trodden in sort of soil and debris into the treads and then a bit dusty on the inside and then when we bring that to the model it should tie in quite nicely with the effect so it's probably a little bit heavy on the inside, but we can work that out. Take a bit of that out. And then um, I'll go ahead and do the same to the next one. And that there completes the build. So um, just a bit of a basic uh, basic one on this, uh, this, this kit. And I uh, didn't want to go too mad on it. So um, nice little uh, weekend build there. So... Um, Everything you'd expect from a sort of 70s kit, you know, um, from Tamiya. Uh, goes together no problem, absolutely fine. Pretty good detail overall, especially when you consider its age. And um, a really nice little um, a really nice little subject. And um, something that's quite good if you're sort of uh, struggling with some bigger projects and you just want to have a go at uh, something a bit smaller, this is um, highly recommended for that. So I'll leave you with some pictures now, and if you like what you've seen, uh, you know, give me a subscribe, like the video, or leave a comment, and um, I'll see you on the next one.